Oh, hello. I'm calling from North Korean Embassy in London, and uh, I understand you want to come to North Korea to play a concert with your guitar. I said, well, yes, that would be interesting. How does one go about doing that? And these were his exact words. He said, first of all, you have to come to the embassy so we can deepen the intimacy with you. All you see on TV are images of marching soldiers and, and missiles and tanks. And everyone looks so serious. And so it was nice to, uh, to, to experience a humour. It makes a connection with people. And so we started laughing about this. They were all, all, almost laughing at themselves about the reputation. So I continued to ask them very direct questions about the possibilities and how life would be for me for those two weeks or ten days in North Korea. So I said, can I collaborate with North Korean musicians, which is really important. And they said, yes. I said, um, can I walk freely in the streets without a guide, without a translator, or just by myself? They said, yes. And everything I asked was yes. I thought, wow, that's contrary to what we are led to believe. Now, this was the first of, I think, four meetings that I had to attend at, at the embassy just to have more conversations about the trip. Now, the Finnish government had sponsored my ticket as a goodwill gesture for making connections, but I couldn't buy the ticket until I knew the dates and had a visa. So it was now 10 days before the festival started and I still had no ticket and no visa. I was called late at night by my counterpart at the embassy, very excited, he said, Mr. Carter, your visa is ready. Can you come tomorrow morning to collect it? I said, sure, great. So I booked my ticket. I booked a Lufthansa ticket from Helsinki to Beijing. And then from Beijing, there would be an Air Corio flight, which is North Korean Airlines flight to Pyongyang. Now, the British ambassador had emailed me um, a week before that and said, Dear Jason, just a curious, how are you getting to North Korea? Because the airline doesn't have a great safety record. They only have two planes, and one is for spares and one is for flying. And the one that flies backwards and forwards does catch fire on a regular basis. And so I asked the embassy if I could go by train. I thought, wow, it'd be awesome to go from, by Beijing to Pyongyang by train. But apparently it takes weeks to organize because they need security, they need a, a, um, a guide, a, a sort of an entourage to accompany you. So it wasn't possible. So I had to take this flight. So I got to the embassy to get my passport back and my visa. And they opened the door and I went in and had more tea and more chat. And I presumed that because they were paying my ticket and sponsoring, sorry, because they were sponsoring the trip, that the visa would be free. And so I said, do, do I have to pay for the visa? And they said, oh yes, you have to pay for the visa. I said, well, how much is it? And they said, oh, it's between 20 and 50 pounds. I said, well, is it 20 or 50 pounds? And he said, 50 pounds. So I paid my £50, got my passport and visa, and i never forget the look of this guy as I left the embassy. Every time I went to visit the embassy, they would say goodbye to me, they'd walk into the garden, but they would never come beyond the gate. And I think that it's, they weren't really allowed to go very far from the embassy, so I'll never forget the words of this guy as he waved goodbye from the embassy door. And I said goodbye and I turned around and he said, Mr Carter! He said, wait! I said, what? He said, you're going to be very famous in North Korea.